Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about a very important concept in Python programming language, which we call as object oriented programming or in short OOPS. So if you have followed my series on basics of Python, then you know, in the first lecture, we have talked about regarding this concept in nutshell. And if you haven't watched that one, I would encourage you to go back and watch that one or else I will just give you a quick intuition regarding this concept. Okay. This OOPS or object oriented programming is not something is not new for programming concepts not only python but many other programming language many other advanced programming language like c++ java php they use this concept in their programming languages okay in the object oriented program there is two concept called class and object class is more like extraction thing and object is the real instance or real value under the class to give you an example in a very layman term, let's say human is a is an abstraction thing, is a concept. That's why we call as class. Because if I will just go ahead and ask you, can you point me out the human? Well, you cannot do that because there is nothing called the human. Well, but you can say I or you are human. So when you say we are human, we don't mean to say that, or you don't mean to say that you are the abstraction thing. You and I both are real things, tangible things, and human is more like a concept. The concept where uh, uh, someone who has two eyes, two nose, uh, sorry, two eyes, two hands, one nose, and some intelligence probably, and there are many things other, call as human. And we all have, like I and you, we all have the same property or same attributes of the concept human. That's why we are the object under this concept or class human. I hope this example clear your doubts regarding object oriented programming. If it is not clear yet, I will give you the example in Python and probably then it would be more clear to you. Uh, for now, just let's keep on moving and let's talk about syntax. There is nothing much to talk about. Basically, there is only one keyword where we say class and the class you, you need to pass the class name then the colon and here you just pass the body of the class well there is a, this is the general syntax of the class but there are a lot of variation which i'm not going to give you all the example in the presentation but we're going to talk each er, each and everything in the in the example in, in the python example so there are many things actually we need to cover under this object oriented programming uh, so I'm not going to cover everything in one lecture. Probably I'm going to divide it into three. In this lecture, probably I'm going to talk about class and object, which is like how to define a class, how to define the object under this class, and what is called constructor and destructor, how you can use it under the class. And lastly, we're going to talk about instance variable and method. And the next lecture, we're going to talk about these two concepts, basically class variable and class method and a static method. And in the last lecture, we're going to talk about a concept called inheritance in class. Before we go and do the actual coding, let me give you the intuition. Why do we need class in the first place? We know the concept, but why do we need it? Class actually help us to group our group or regroup our data and function in such a way that it could be reused in the later point of time as well. And by defining the instance, so first you need to define the class, then you define the instance, which could be at any point of time once you define the class. I say instance right now, but when I give you the presentation, I call it as object. Both the things are same. Many people call it uh, object and instance. They use these two terms interchangeably. So don't get confused. They both mean the same thing only. Let's take an example of an organization where many employees are working and we are going to create a class called employee for this organization. So the minimum requirement for to define a class employee would be the class, the keyword class, which is used to define a class, then the class name itself. In this case, it's employee then the colon and let's say this particular class doesn't do anything so to do that we can use the keyword pass in that way it will just move to the next line okay and here i can define the instance under this class so to do that we can use the the name of the class which is employee in this case then within the parenthesis 
just don't pass anything because this particular class doesn't take any input as of now. We will see that example in a minute, but this particular class doesn't take any input. And let's say this particular uh, uh, this is the one ex, uh, emp1 would be the first instance of the uh, class employee and emp2 would be the second ex, second instance of the class employee so if i will just go ahead and run it you know you can see the class is being created and also the instance is also being created now i can go ahead and say print emp1 and also i can print emp2 and if i will just run it you can see there are they both are belongs to the class employee but this object of the class which i said instance but both are the same thing only has a different namespace you can see both are similar you know mostly same digit but lastly there are last four digit is different you know so because these two instance m1 and m2 store in a different location in the memory so this is how you can create a instance and this is how you can create a, this sorry this is how you can create a class and this is how you can create the instance under this class okay let's go ahead and define some of the attributes for these two class m1 and m2 on a side note i'm going to use these two words attributes and method very often when we're going to talk about classes when i say attribute that means the value of the variables of the instance which we're going to see it in right now and the method is nothing but the function that defined under this class which we will see in a couple of minutes so let's go ahead and define the attributes first so for this one let me comment these two things and come here and say emp1 and the first attribute which I can say is first name. So first name is equal to let me give my name here and which is Ruthie is the first name. And the second attribute which I can define for this one, let's say last name is equal to Ranjan. Okay, uh, there's a lot of spelling mistake. Uh, and one more attribute, let's define for this instance M1, let's say month uh, pay, let's say. And for, for this instance, let's define, let's put the value 30,000. And we can do, we can let's define the same attributes for instance m2 as well so for this one i can change one to two and instead of smoothie let me put this vijay sharma okay now if i will just go ahead and run it you can see both this class uh, the class is uh, created and both the instance under this class m1 m2 is also being defined and here we have assigned some of the attributes okay so if you don't believe me you can say print and let's say m1 and when you put the dot symbol then 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 a period symbol then you can access by all the uh, attributes and we haven't defined the method but when you do that when you put this dot operator you should see all the attributes as well as methods under these instance so for this instance let's let's first grab the first name and let's print it so in this case you can see uh, this is smoothie which is which we have defined here so we have assigned the attribute first name here itself now this particular method is not very efficient and not to mention it actually kills the purpose of defining a class so the main purpose of defining a class so that uh, class is to define some of like group some of the attributes and functions so that it could be reused at later point of time so doing it manually will kill the purpose so instead of doing this one what we can do we can use the method and for this one the let's first talk about a, 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 a special type of method which called 
constructor or you know initializer in python but if you are coming from a different programming language background they call it as a uh, constructor so for that you say def which is stands for definition which we generally use for you know defining a function then use to uh, underscore then the q uh, then i n i t then use to underscore then here uh, use two parentheses and within the parentheses you need to pass the instance itself in convention in, in general convention they use the keyword self but you can use any keywords and what does it means whenever you refine a amp class employee or whatever it is it will take the instance of the class as an input to the first uh, is the first input and then after the comma you can pass the rest of the input so for example here i can say let me copy this one and paste it here the first name and last name and here i can say monthly pay now if i will just um, now let's just uh, define this class first then run okay so here we can say self then first name let me write it down then i will i will tell you what exactly it does so this initializer will run by default when you define a, a instance under this class okay and when you define a class right now we are defining here as an employee but in, in after defining a int function int method we cannot just pass empty parenthesis for the uh, to define an instance we need to pass some of the variables so whatever the variables we we going to uh, whatever the arguments sorry uh, we going to pass it for this instance it going to use those arguments and put it for that instance as a value for or attributes for that uh, instance so here you can say self the first name that means the first name of the instance will assign the value whatever we we, we are going to pass so here you can use any keyword but let me keep it this way so that i will give you the example why i am using the same thing here and here as well similarly you can define self dot last name and as a standard convention we can keep this one but you not necessarily this has to be the same name and similarly we can use the self dot month pay and here i can just use the uh, the same one month pay and that's it so right now if i will just go ahead and run it you can see it's throwing me an error because this when we defining the instance under this class it takes arguments which is this many but we are providing none so that's why it's throwing error so in a way we can define uh, we can use all these arguments and uh, and corresponding to the each of this argument we can provide the value for this one let's say uh, smruti the, for the first one let's say smruti and then let me just copy only uh, copy this one and paste it here and then 30,000 show and similarly I can do here well we don't need to use the same uh, you know the, the argument we just keep the order same and it will take care of 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 passing the argument so we can say Vijay and Sharma and in end we can say well let's change this to 50 well he is a rich guy huh 50,000 then let me save it and by the way you can see here we are using three argument while we while we have when we defining this int method we use four argument the first one is the instance itself which we are using the keyword self for for, for that uh, uh, as a placeholder for that instance why because when you define this instance by default this this employee class this class will take this employee as the first argument you don't need to specify that one explicitly it by default that means it is going into it 
and let's go ahead and like for this one let me delete this one and let's go ahead and run it and in this case you can also see it actually returning the same thing what we have seen in the previous example now it is much more efficient now let me give you the intuition why we keep uh, this uh, the name of the attributes of the instance as well as the variable name of the argument same let's me let me change it to let's say only first here and uh, and the attribute name is the first and the variable name of the argument is the first name now here we are using the first name and passing the value smoothie but here we are accessing the same information from the employee emp1 now if i will just run it you can see there is an error because this emp1 doesn't have a, a attributes called first name but here if you see we have defined first name so by default this is our human intuition that we always use the same name so that's why i try to avoid do such thing it should possible if you just like now change it to first name um, like rather than using first name and use first which is the attributes for the for this instance emp1 and if you run it right now it will actually will give you the result but to avoid such confusion just you know use the same name for the uh, uh, the for the attributes as well as for the variable name for the argument that's the standard convention similar to the constructor i in it we can also define the destructor which stands which we can use the keyword def then use to underscore then del then here similar to the constructor you need to pass the uh, the instance as a first argument here we can pass self then let me just use the keyword pass because what it does basically uh, likewise in, in initializer when we define an instance it just call this one and when everything is done like here is the last line where the emp1 is executed and after that there is no code so after this this destructor will will call and it will clear of this emp1 and m2 from the memory and this is a stand is a, is a very good practice that you use the destructor in your class so that it will save a lot of space for real calculation okay and just let me save it and run it you can see it uh what's something wrong here employee there's no attribute called the first name oops sorry i need to change this one to first name now if i will just go ahead and run it you can see it execute uh, similarly what we have done it earlier but in up but in in the background this m1 and m2 has been deleted from the from, from the memory after this point so that you can do real calculation you can save some of the space for the real calculation okay let's pause it here and do a quick recap so we have seen a class how to define a class and instance at least a very simple class and instance we have seen also how to define the attributes to a class and also we have seen how to define a, a constructor and destructor which is the init method and the del method i know i haven't covered the the explicit uh, method for the instance but you know del and init method is also this constructor and destructor is also a kind of methods instance specific method by the way we're going to see uh, this instance specific method in the next tutorial let's park that thing for the future video i know there's a lot to take in please re-watch the video if, if it is necessary do all your code by yourself i will just provide all this code in the github repository and provide you the link in the down in the description below if you have any question feel free to reach us by dropping us the comment or else thanks for watching please do like and share this video until next time cheers